November marks Native American Heritage Month, and today is Native American Heritage Day. So tonight, we're taking a look at our own local history. It was around this time, 53 years ago, that American Indians of different tribes took control of Alcatraz Island and proclaimed it as their own. I traveled to the island with one of the leaders of that movement as she reflects on their protest. More than 1.4 million people visit an island in the center of the San Francisco Bay each year. Alcatraz is best known for the country's most feared federal penitentiary, where the worst of the worst were locked up. But in 1963, the prison was shut down and served no purpose for years. Then in 1969, a group set forth to claim the 22 acres and draw attention to the genocide committed against all Native Americans by establishing a cultural center at the site. Their live-in protest gained national attention. Today, Dr. Laneda Warjack, who led the occupation alongside Richard Oakes, is heading back to the island to instead lead a tour. As a boat approaches Alcatraz, traces of their decades-old demonstration come into view. Red paint at the front entrance reads, Indian land. It was exciting. We wanted to do something to help our people in fighting for treaty rights and enforcement of our treaties. Is the only thing that we could do that, that was positive in the right direction. Warjack explained the occupiers were guided by the understanding that federal surplus property reverts back to Native Americans if they claim it. So for the next year and a half, about 400 natives from far and wide used the abandoned prison as a home. They went by the name Indians of all tribes. Everyone cooked, cleaned, and took care of their kids. Meanwhile, Warjack Oaks and their spokesperson, John Trudell, addressed the media and tried to establish talks with the U.S. government. She says a negotiator refused to do so, saying that they were too young and militant, which the group denied, given their peaceful approach. But not all American Indians backed the occupation. A letter expressing opposition was written to the president by members of the local Ohlone tribe who never received a federally recognized reservation. It read in part, those who are squatting on this rock are mainly from other states. If the United States is ready to deed this land to anyone, we claim that right. We will immediately restore it as a natural wildlife sanctuary and a way station for all people navigating the bay. We can't help but be who we are. And this was the, the place that we wanted to uh, occupy. And uh, it had international press. So the media is really important for us. We live or die by the press. And we didn't have any, um, we never had any acknowledgement for anything that we ever fought for and people were dying. Although the occupiers were eventually forced out by federal agents in 1971, Warjack credits a protest for other forms of progress for indigenous people. And today, tourists who flock to the rock can learn more about native strife in a temporary exhibit titled Red Power. It pales in comparison to the grand vision Warjack and her supporters had. So 53 years later, Warjack continues that mission. She wrote to Deb Halland, the first native U.S. Interior Secretary, requesting a permanent American Indian Museum education and cultural center on the island. There might be some people who didn't even realize that happened. You know, she mentioned the other forms of progress that uh, that action uh, took. Can, can you elaborate on what she was talking about? So she credited their demonstration for leading to other forms of progress, as I mentioned, uh, one of which she pointed to was President Nixon eliminated a policy called Public Law 280, which at the time extended federal law enforcement into Indian territory. Mm. And then she also said that the Indian Child Welfare Act was a result of this as well. So that stopped the federal government from taking custody of indigenous kids. Interesting. It's a big evolution it's still going on with relations between tribes and the federal government. That one's actually hanging in the balance with the Supreme Court soon as well. Oh, thank you.